I intend to live in this house with my mother, just the two of us. When my husband Todd suddenly declared such a thing, I was so surprised that I couldn't believe it. I will take care of all the monthly rent and other expenses. So I want you to leave. She said, raising her voice firmly. I was just surprised and confused by their sudden actions. What triggered them to make such a decision? It later became a little clearer after my mother-in-law completed the process of changing the name of the contractor of the condominium. My name is Summer. I turn 34 this year and lead a busy life. This name was given to me by my late father as I was born during the summer season. Initially, it may appear as a basic name, but it holds my father's profound love for me. My father ran a small town workshop, and his polishing techniques were highly regarded in the industry. As a child, I loved playing in that workshop, often scolded by my mother. However, whenever he found the time, my father would explain his skills and the work of the workshop to me in a way I could understand. The workshop faced tough times after the bank refused to grant a loan, and the amount of debt increased significantly. Even my father's highly regarded skills couldn't justify the investment from the bank's perspective in the old workshop equipment. My father's debt continued to grow, and unable to bear the pressure, he ended his life in the back of the workshop. At that time, being so young in elementary school, it was hard to comprehend everything. In that confusion, to protect me, my mother and I left the town to build a discreet life far away. Sadly, perhaps due to the long years of hardship and stress, my mother fell ill and passed away when I started high school. With the despair of that reality, I often found myself angry at this cruel world. Nonetheless, the courage to live on and face forward was fueled by an inner passion to let future generations know my father's skills. To realize that dream, I worked hard and graduated from high school. While receiving scholarship support, I managed to work many part-time jobs to afford the daily expenses while studying at the local public university's engineering faculty. During my days at the university, I met a friendly young man named Todd. He was a bit clumsy, often asking to borrow my lecture notes. I was focused on my studies, so I didn't have many chances to build deep friendships, but Todd's brightness and thoughtfulness gradually warmed my heart. Unlike many other men, Todd never looked down on me for being a woman, but deeply recognized my skills and passion. Summer has amazing abilities. He would say while always praising my achievements and efforts. His words reminded me of the warm and happy feelings I had when praised by my father as a child. I chose to work for a major company, and Todd found employment at a medium-sized firm. After graduating from college, we started living together and began sharing our lives. Todd efficiently managed all the household chores, especially on the days when my work was extremely busy, his support was a great comfort. Six years have passed, and now at 28, I seriously started considering reviving the small town workshop my father once managed, utilizing the skills and connections I had cultivated over the years. Todd was completely supportive of this idea. My girl's dream will finally take shape through this project. He warmly supported the realization of my dream. Over these six years, the topic of marriage came up frequently. However, I wanted to focus on my goal of rebuilding my father's workshop before contemplating marriage. Todd respected this wish and waited patiently. As a means of raising funds, I chose to use crowdfunding. Leveraging my position as a female engineer to the fullest, I incorporated its uniqueness into the advertising campaign. With the societal shift towards increasing support for women, I carefully planned and continued my efforts to secure funding and the right personnel. After four years of effort, I was finally able to revive the town workshop. Having memories of the old workshop's financial struggles, I introduced state-of-the-art equipment into the factory and renewed its appearance with a modern and sophisticated design. Furthermore, by establishing facilities and systems that make it comfortable for women to work, I aim to create a workplace that is also friendly for women. These efforts quickly raised the factory's fame, earning top-tier status within the industry. Many might see my success as mere luck, but the journey was filled with countless challenges and efforts. The person who knew this fact the best was my university partner, Todd. However, his career did not progress smoothly, and while his colleagues were promoted, Todd remained a rank-and-file employee. He felt frustrated with this situation. Day by day, he became more irritable, and to me, he began to say coldly. You're really lucky to have succeeded. There must be someone better for you than me, right? 
I repeatedly told him that my success would not have been possible without his support. I genuinely believed that without Todd's involvement in my life and career, it would have been difficult to achieve my current status and success. To show my deep gratitude and love for him, I proposed marriage. Your presence is special to me. Your pure and warm-hearted sensitivity brings happiness to my everyday life. In my daily life, I felt great comfort and solace from his presence. I dearly loved his childlike innocence and excitement for new things. But it's true that over the 10 years since we became adults, I began to see changes in his heart. My hope was to dispel his insecurities and doubts through marriage, but I had no idea at that point how that choice would affect my relationship with him later on. With our decision to marry, we hurried to inform our families. I had imagined that Todd must have grown up in a bright and warm atmosphere. However, the reality was different from what I expected. His family home was an old wooden house, showing signs of decay that made me worry it might collapse at any moment. And the first time Todd's mother saw me. You're the daughter of a wealthy business owner who they often talk about, aren't you? Due to my past fundraising and media exposure, I was already familiar to her. Indeed, in the pursuit of success, I believed in the importance of first impressions, so I invested suitable time and effort in my attire and appearance. However, from my mother-in-law's perspective, my attire might have seemed a bit too flashy and excessive. She began to speak in a tone laced with sarcasm. You seem to have been helped a lot by Todd, haven't you? Well, I am very grateful indeed. It's quite an old house, but please come in. Feeling a bit tense and uneasy from her tone and attitude, I entered the house. Looking at Todd, he seemed to have something to say but remained silent. Todd's father was also there, wearing tattered clothes, and his restless demeanor gave away the home's atmosphere and situation. Sorry for the state of our house, and you came all this way. Our home might look ordinary at first glance, but it has its fair share of issues, too. I'm sure this one is quite different from a wealthy household. I took several deep breaths internally to calm myself in response to his words. Todd quietly sat next to me, not saying a word to ease the tension. Each time I made a casual remark, the parents would reply with, After all, rich people have different ways of thinking and values than common people like us. It was hard to have an actual conversation or to connect emotionally. Back at home, I pressed Todd about what his parents felt about the wealthy, and he shared some surprising facts. Since he was a child, he was taught that. Fancy apartment buildings are probably built on some kind of wrongdoing. Wealthy people must have some shady dealings in the background. They can't possibly understand other people's feelings or hardships. Perhaps wealthy families despise people like us. It's best to avoid getting too involved with such people. Especially when Todd was a child, if his parents saw him playing with a friend from a wealthy family, they would scold him harshly and advise him to stay away from that friend. I wasn't raised in a very wealthy family myself, and while I sometimes admired the life of the wealthy, I really wanted to know in what might have caused his parents to harbor such strong feelings. Even afterwards, Todd's parents seemed disapproving of our relationship, with the mother-in-law often saying worriedly, Todd, I hope that woman isn't making you do too much. And the father-in-law advising? In married life, don't end up living days completely dominated by your wife. It felt like Todd's declining self-esteem was influenced, at least in part, by his parents' beliefs and preconceptions. Behind my wealthy career was a strong desire to fulfill the dream left behind by my late father, not from a wish to look down on people or to use them. Todd had previously discussed this with his parents, but it seems that my social success left a strong impression on them. Wanting to improve our relationship, I tried to communicate and understand them multiple times. However, no matter how much goodwill I showed, my father-in-law always approached me with a bias. This is how rich people think. And every time I gave them a gift. That's very kind of you, but this must have been too expensive. These reactions gradually made me close off my heart. Meanwhile, Todd began visiting his family home more frequently as his father's health deteriorated. Even though we were married and living together, we increasingly started distancing ourselves from each other. And about two years later, he suddenly announced to me that I've decided to quit my job because I'm too busy with things at home. I was angry that he had made such a decision without talking to me first. 
By that point, our relationship had become a mere formality with no meaningful or sincere communication. He claimed to be busy with housework, but in reality, he often went out and spent time at casinos and racetracks. When I pointed out his actions, Todd replied. We could just get a professional housekeeper. I am not your servant. We have enough money, so it shouldn't be a problem. His words left me deeply shocked and at a loss for words. Around that time, the father-in-law's health worsened, and he soon passed away. Two months after receiving the news of my father-in-law's death, my mother-in-law and Todd came to visit my house, and he suddenly declared. I plan to live in this house with my mother, just the two of us. I was so taken aback by this unexpected statement that I was speechless and just stood there. I will pay the monthly rent, so I want you to leave here. She stepped forward and demanded firmly. Shocked by her demand, all I could do was to ask. Wait a minute. Are you really able to pay the rent, mom? Then the mother-in-law started yelling, her face turning red with anger. I can't forgive you for belittling us like this. You always look down on us, but we can act properly when we need to. We have always been doing our best. Todd also showed his dissatisfaction with a deep sigh, expressing. I won't take your bossing around anymore. I'm going to walk my life from now on, and I'm going to do it on my own terms. Surprised by their intense attitude, I lost my words for a moment. Thoughts of their past actions and words crossed my mind, and I concluded that it would be very difficult to deal with them any more than that. I see, I understand. Then, I will leave this house next month. I replied firmly. But the mother-in-law was not satisfied and pushed for more. I can't wait for next month. Can you just get the hell out of here and leave next week? I'm getting ready for my new life and I've already arranged for my stuff to be delivered to my new house. Her demands were sudden, and I was puzzled why she was arranging a move so quickly when I had just decided to leave. It was impossible for me to understand her way of thinking or course of action. Seeing my hesitation, my mother-in-law raised her voice even more. Someone as wealthy as you should leave the moving to professionals, right? She again uttered a certain sarcastic phrase that she often used. It seemed she viewed the wealthy as something special or different. Initially, I thought it would be proper for them to move to a new place since I was the one contracted for the house. However, as if she anticipated my attitude, the mother-in-law continued to raise her voice. This house belongs to Todd. No matter how much you earn, I won't allow you to hide that fact. She asserted this very strongly. Behind her words, I felt the message that just because I have a higher income than Todd, I shouldn't feel superior. Turning to look at Todd, his face had changed significantly from when we first met, now sullen and gloomy. Seeing his expression, I questioned why I had spent so much time with such a person. In this situation, I felt living with them was unbearable, and I wanted to avoid being in the same place, even breathing the same air. Amidst these feelings, I was sure that it was time to seriously consider divorce. Understood. I will proceed with the moving arrangements this weekend. I'll handle all the necessary document changes and procedures then. When I responded in a soft tone, the two exchanged glances and smirked as if triumphant, seemingly satisfied as if a long battle had ended and they had finally won. Immediately after, I began searching for vacancies in apartments and condos, and started looking for a reliable moving company. Despite my busy days, including business trips for work, whenever I returned home, Todd was deep in sleep, acting as if he was ignoring my existence. And then, on the weekend, Todd calmly signed the divorce papers without showing any emotion. Meanwhile, the mother-in-law was receiving explanations from the real estate agent about the rental agreement and signing the contract. I was particularly concerned about whether she truly understood what she was agreeing to with the high rent of $6,000. After all the procedures were completed, I found myself walking alone toward a new place, with a high-rise condo behind me. The new apartment I chose had very secure surroundings. It was a one-bedroom apartment, perfect for me living alone. During the move, I decided to discard many unnecessary things I had accumulated over the years. As a result, both my room and my mind were cleared, allowing me to start a new life with a fresh mindset. Decorating the space to my liking was a very enjoyable time for me. Gradually, as I immersed myself in my new lifestyle, the thoughts of Todd and his family started to fade. 
However, in reality, I couldn't completely erase them from my mind and might have been focusing on other things to avoid thinking about them. Reflecting on the many memories with Todd and the challenging times we had overcome together, I never imagined our relationship would end in such a way. Especially during our university days, despite both of us struggling financially, we supported each other's livelihood. The strain that developed over time was truly deep and immeasurable. However, I later came across some shocking information. When I coincidentally reunited with a university friend, she told me rumors of Todd flaunting around in city clubs. Also, a former neighbor from the condo I used to live in mentioned seeing my ex-mother-in-law frequently entering and exiting in a luxury foreign car. They described seeing them wearing unfamiliar luxurious fur clothes, with way of speaking completely different to what they were like before. Hearing about them lead such a lavish lifestyle, I couldn't believe they once looked down on the wealthy. Particularly after I had distanced myself from that life, I could see how much they had transformed. But then, an unexpected event occurred. Two months later, I suddenly received a call from Todd. I really need your help. His voice conveyed a level of desperation I had never heard before. I had not expected to hear from him in such a manner after our one-sided relationship ended. Actually, we've gotten ourselves into some unexpected trouble. What exactly happened? Todd's response indicated that the events had begun three months prior. He was shocked to learn the astonishing truth through a call from his mother. I hit the jackpot in the lottery, can you believe it? Thirty million dollars. She had apparently often bought lottery tickets in the past, and this time, she had won an amount beyond her wildest dreams. Is that really true? Or is it a joke? He asked her to confirm, and after checking the lottery numbers herself multiple times, the ex-mother-in-law assured. There's no mistake, I've checked it over and over. We are so unbelievably rich now. Now we can face those upper-class people with no problem. Truly, God has blessed us. She spoke with elation that seemed to lift her spirits. Moved by those words, Todd was in tears when his mother added more fuel. With this amazing stroke of luck, you can escape from that woman's clutches. Have you heard? That woman seems to be frolicking around with some young guy now. Such a woman should be kept at a distance. These words seemed to push Todd further, and his pent-up anger and frustration boiled over. Now that we've acquired wealth, I won't be controlled by her. We won't have anything to do with her anymore. With a trembling voice, he declared this and then informed me of our disconnection. It was clear that during this series of events, a common goal had emerged between the two of them to completely exclude me. Afterwards, they began a lavish lifestyle in a downtown luxury condo, seemingly spending extravagantly every day. Todd was using his savings liberally, and the ex-mother-in-law was spending her late husband's inheritance without any reservations, enjoying a life of luxury. Excited, the two of them decided to go to the nearest bank to cash in the lottery ticket. However, at the bank, they were faced with a shocking truth. The lottery ticket they brought was actually from the previous year, and disbelief and dismay spread across their faces. It turned out the ex-mother-in-law had been comparing last year's lottery ticket with this year's winning numbers. Amidst this commotion, it seemed there was a deep-seated fear that somehow I would take their wealth from them. I myself was so surprised upon hearing their story that I was at a loss for words. That's truly unfortunate and sad. After conveying my sympathy, just as I was about to end the call, Todd spoke up again. But we should have a right to alimony, right? He asked with hope, continuing to claim without any basis. You were cheating, right? On that fact alone we should be able to claim alimony. And he explained his situation. I felt stressed about the house, and that led to my decision to quit my job. So, I believe I have the right to demand alimony. However, in my memory, it was clear that Todd had quit his job of his own accord, and thereafter, he shirked household duties and indulged in leisure. I was overwhelmed with disbelief that he would make such a claim. Anger surged within me, my emotions intensifying. I can't believe you would say such a thing. You sleazy man. Are you for real? I raised my voice involuntarily. My usual calm judgment and strong resilience had frayed in this moment. Perhaps sensing my anger, I could feel Todd's surprise and confusion over the phone. Truly, it's me who should be seeking alimony. You only think about yourself, heartlessly kicking me out. Always that want to be rich a spiel. I heard it so many times. 
Why do you and your mother complain so much? I can't tolerate this attitude of just being jealous without making any effort. After my emotional outburst, there was a moment of silence, then I felt a sense of clarity and hung up the phone. Their mistake with the lottery ticket astounded me. It was indicative of their carelessness. But now, it's none of my business. Whatever fate they meet is irrelevant to me. Days later, as I walked in front of my factory, I saw a figure. It was my ex-mother-in-law. In a visibly deplorable state, with disheveled hair and worn clothes, she appeared before me and began to prostrate. Please, help me. We can't afford to return the $6,000. Please come back and be a part of our family again. That should have been clearly written in the documents. Why didn't you check them thoroughly? Didn't you understand how serious it all was? And about that lottery ticket. I murmured slowly, choosing my words carefully. Will you truly abandon a mother and child struck by such misfortune? After a pause, I shook my head calmly and said. I believe that luck, in many cases, is something you forge for yourself. Despite hardships, I have strived to carve out my own destiny. How much of that mindset did you have? My words left her with a surprised and somewhat regretful expression, struggling to find a response. I walked past her and started walking in the direction of the building. After a short walk, I turned around to find my former mother-in-law still standing there. But I never looked back again and kept walking, focused on the path ahead. As expected, Todd and his mother were eventually evicted from the luxury condo. They chose an old wooden shack as their new dwelling and, having spent all their savings, they now spend their days working various part-time jobs to support themselves and save for the future. Over the following years, I dedicated myself to my work, and my factory grew far beyond its original small-town scale. I secured funds to purchase a larger plot of land nearby and established a new state-of-the-art factory there. This newly built facility was designed and built with the comfort of the entire family in mind, with complete maternity leave and childcare facilities for employees. Although my parents were not able to witness this success in person, every time I see a smiling couple with their children visiting the factory, I remember myself as a child and feel a deep sense of relief and happiness at the sight of them.